Hello and welcome back here to DreamHack Astro Open Denver. My name is Risk, alongside me is the best, and we're almost ready to go here with CLG versus Renegades. It, it, it took a little while, but, but we're finally here. All the players are connected and they're Wait knifing as we speak. Waiting patiently, but you know what? It's about to happen. As long as it happens, I'm okay, all right? I'm excited for this match. CLG and Renegades had some history with each other. Players being swapped by. Always a close match between these two, except for I think one of them was a blowout for Renegades, who uh, I think 16 won them on Kabul. So still CLG is able to bounce back how to how they will adjust this time around, especially being on land. And so the analyst people have said that Renegades aren't as great in land, but uh, hey, it's a new chance, a new opportunity to disprove that. I felt like last time around uh, when I saw them on, on US soil was was back in uh, DreamHack Atlanta uh, early on this summer, and I actually think they did a, a quite okay showing there. So I'm looking forward to see if they can they can bring some of that same thing. They're just doing the huddle now, as we usually do have with these CS teams, just before the, the game huddle. goes live. So with you being a former competitive player on this kind of a level, what are you talking about just before you go into the game when you're in this kind of huddle situation? I think just do a game plan of what we're going to do, stay focused, stay positive, hype each other up, know that, hey, we're thick and thin, we sweat, we cry, you know, this is our lives, we have to play our best, let's do it, let's go, and then I'm hyped, I'm hyped right now go. just from that, I, so. I, I missed it, man, it's so the there we good go. old days, I, uh, yeah. that's how I was all about the huddle, I think I was one of the, I'm not going to say I'm the person, but I was one of the, you know, the first teams that I was on, I always liked the huddle, because I, I came from hockey, and so in hockey, you know, we always huddled right before the game and just you know, make sure everyone's on the same page and that we're yeah. mentally there. And that's what you got to do in, the, in these in these tournaments that, you know, it's not written in stone who's win or who loses. I mean, anything can happen. And that's something I want to see. I want to I see a really awesome game uh, from these two teams. And hopefully a, a quick start from one of them. Uh, we, we talked about before here on, on the stream about the uh, the power of momentum and the power of, of, of confidence. And definitely when you have two teams that are this close, this could be like the, the extra 5% that just tips it over to, let's say, yep. a CLG advantage or a Renegades advantage. Exactly, and especially when uh, you know a lot of emotions on the line, I think these the, these two teams can be pretty emotional here. And, and I think you know whoever carries the momentum longer will win the match. All right, we are ready to jump into Cobblestone. This is the third game of the day in the group stage at DreamHack Astro Open Denver. It's going to be CLG versus Renegades. The, uh, well, we can't say full Australian team anymore because they're not, but definitely have uh, that Australian chemistry in that team, those players, as we do go for a big B hit here, it seems like. Drop control is a point of focus. As Nate is ready to go. USPS in action. Smokes are being lined up, flashes are as well, and here comes the push. Has a close range with the USPS. Tried to take that second one down and will eventually be taken out by Ricky, but that took a long time. He's now in front of Bombsite. It looks like CLG is working in this around this Bombsite, but again, there's two Renegades people still in this B Bombsite, so CLG is unable to plant the bomb. Ricky taking out JKS, and then Miguel taking out Ricky. Great game. this, you still owe. Playing silly with their names, but Kusa taking out two kills as Nifty taking out FNS. Now it's one and two. Uh, one on one, Nifty Very nice equalizing skill. that right now. Now Kusta versus Nifty, 1v1. It's two players we've been talking about in the, in the pregame. Now it comes down to this. Bomb is dropped, so it's up to Kusta to make a play. Nifty just holding the defensive angle and not sure where each other are at the moment. Oh, I think Nifty. Yeah, he heard that. that. But is he going to play it properly? So he's counting on Kusta to peek out of this position. He has two different positions to look at. Nifty definitely has made the right choice here. The question is, can he hit the shot? And still somehow avoiding Kusta as they have not spotted each other. They still don't know where each other are at. And Kusta makes a shot now. And now he knows and Nifty whiffs on the shot, but there's only eight seconds left. And Kusta coming in huge right there. He could... Uh, Nifty should have played that maybe list a little more passive, and with eight seconds, he has to plant the bomb or chase him down. Yeah. Uh, Kusta with the running clock there, always good. And I thought we do have CLG picking up that pistol. Very close in the end. After rotations, 
coming in from both sides as we usually do see in this secondary round. A bunch of pistol, but this time around, USPs and just HGs. I kind of like that. I kind of like because what happens if you buy uh, pistol armor on the first gun round? I mean, you don't have all the Molotovs or nades that you necessarily need. In a map like Kabul, you need the utility. You need Molotovs. You need nades. I know I keep saying Molotov, but it is incendiary. You know, same concept here. And so it's, um, it's very important on this map. And so a team like Renegades knows this. So they're going to, you know, just save it. A couple of grenades being bought. I think when Nifty spots someone, there's going to be flying a grenade in. And actually, Ricky is, is pretty aware of this. Look at how he rotates back. That's nice read from Ricky. Maybe it's one of those old tendencies that he can no wonder. know about. Uh, when that aggressive peak comes in, he knows that, okay, to fall back and beware of those grenades. As FNS is just pushing in here with the UP45. Shouldn't have him in trouble as they line up for him. And it's all on Azza. Mac 10 in hand. CZ75 in the back. And a 1v4 to clutch. He's not expected to win this round, but as many... Um, kills and, and guns he can get, it, the better for Team Renegades is he's playing this offing right here. He might catch off from this here. He is too quick. Smelled his aftershave from a mile away. It happens. Quickest gun in the West. As we do have CLG go up 2-0. And as we talked about, usually we do see teams in this kind of spot after buying pistols. They sit around 2K and that's kind of the name of the game. But this time around they have a bit more. Yeah, you can see they're kind of hovering around 3,000, like 2,700 to 3,000. It's going to help them immensely on the next Get that round. full utility. Full utility is huge. And some kits, maybe even head armor. Maybe they think this, that CLG might keep some of their ups in yeah. the next gun round. Three ups at this time around. Let's see what Renegades decide to do. It's, it's of course, going to be a hard one to do anything against as they are just taking out patrol using their weaponry and their utility. But actually, FNS goes down to 3 HP, so... Very close that he's still got that duel on point. Grenade comes in and just <laughs> Kobe's nifty out of the server. Nice shot. As Naf, As and JKS are the ones remaining with only pistols, so they kind of like this formation they got going here. Maybe they can catch a gun or something off guard. Or not. And well, there we go. Cutler, though, just reading that play. Nice elbow peek in. Uh Team Renegades kind of have a weird angle where they couldn't capitalize to trap a person. So Cutler playing that angle smart, getting two kills before falling down, and to really um, minimize the loss of guns. And as you see from CLG, they do keep two arms. So the head armor for most of the Team Renegades is very key at this point. So JKS going for that cheeky corner spot. The Sneefty's behind him. So usually when you spot that AWP, you're going to think, OK, that's a guy covering mid. But no, there's a secondary guy with an M4, which if you just run past him, he's going to be able to take out eventually your whole team. Exactly. And see, CLG's kind of set with a, a default. They're going to try to push back this halls here. They toss him out of early utility. And I think it's going to be a double fake here, where they make noise at A hall, wait a little bit, and then make noise at B and then kill the people A as they're trying to maybe over-rotate. So try and get that little timing window where it's like five seconds, you could hit A. I think that's what they might try to do. Let's see if they can hit that window indeed. Aggressive smoke comes out from NAF, so control of B plat will be taken. Meanwhile, drop has been taken by the terrorist team. As Ricky is here, just holding the angle. Could potentially now also use that position and connect it to split for that A bomb site. Let's just wait and see how they're going to play it out. He still goes in for the frag. Actually, he gets the first one. That's Ricky gone down. Does lose a bit of HP in the duel on 27 right now as FNS tries to push in UMP 45. As he still goes down. Now only one terrorist remaining towards that B bomb side. The rest are situated towards A long. And FNS right here, he should not make the first move. He should just wait and let the other people at A do it. He's going to throw a flash because they know he's in the area. Try to keep as many people here as possible. As CLG hits B, and Nifty was a nice shot on Cutler. And then gets taken out by Nani. JKS with a cleanup. And two even exchanges by both teams. Leads into two on two as Azure takes out Nadi. And now it's off to the FNS to really uh, take the one on two. But they know where he's at with seven seconds. Azure, nice round. Getting the old 2K and recovering the op for Nifty. Yeah, I felt like it well. Yeah, I felt like even though Nate got a couple of frags, they got the double kill in as he entered into the bomb site, which is always very good. I feel like Renegades were always in control of that whole situation as it happened. Yes. I didn't feel like the the 
the execute timing or, or the general route itself was was that well structured from CLG. I didn't feel like CLG would challenge or Renegades would challenge at any point. Yeah, well. Team Renegades had a nice pop flash in the drop area, which really kind of messed up CLG's kind of take towards B kind of strat. Killing yeah. off Ricky off the start kind of really messed everything up, and so uh, now CLG starts off another um, gun round this time. Kusta with an AWP. This is something that we see for the first time in this match and see how he can battle against Nifty here. This time around, we do see the double stack from the CTs towards the law to deny that initial presence. But nothing has been shown just yet. The terrorist team are sitting up towards B with three of their players. So do have Kuzde. I think as they talked about on the desk, he has to be the, the difference maker for CLG if they want to take a win here in this game. He's still on, on plan. That's a, a Molotov as well, so could potentially block off this push if it if it comes. CLG right now playing four players towards this B bomb side and one holding the back just to make sure that no big flank can come in, no information player can come in from these aggressive CT and Renegades, and that's not the point either. They just take him out control slowly but surely. Asa comes in with a frag onto Ricky, and he has no support. There's no one who can refrag for him in that position. And Asa just gets a free kill. JKS onto Cutler. Asa's position here is really nice. I really like it. He's just waiting, holding it, taking time basically away from CLG as they have to move in through other avenues to get that side control. And just getting completely struck down here. Not a single death. Flawless victory by Team Renegade. They play that really smart, and Azure staying alive is key. You don't have to repeat angles if you're up in numbers. And definitely. Just holding that corner, making sure, okay, I know there's someone in drop, but they can't go past me, so you don't have to worry. Just hold your own positions. Very nice play. And then as you saw that round, this map kind of turns into who can use their you utility more e efficiently. Like, you want to bait nades, you want to bait Molotovs, and... Um, um, Team Renegades was actually doing a pretty good job countering as soon as CL, as soon as CL, she tossed a flash or a Molotov, they would counter with a flash from Molotov and just to kind of cancel out CLG. So great job on Team Renegades. I see just a couple of pistols here this time around for CLG. Double up set up on that CT side. We saw another CT team have problems in the first game of the day as Cloud9 went double CT or double up CT on Inferno. This time around, it's Renegade, so it could, they could be in trouble close range. And as I say that, FNS picks up a close range kill onto Azza, wins that duel, and doesn't lose a lot of HP in the, in the trade as well. So, great little start for CLG. They need every bit of help they can get at this point. Three players sit up towards A long, but I, they are rotating back now with the information given. You have to get that kill in the drop area. Team Renegades still keeping two people towards A and one connector, so they were anticipating a, an A take, but Renegades kind of uh, not adjusting too much just yet until they see the bomb, and he still is kind of in a weird spot right now. He does manage taking out Cutler before being taken out by Ethan, and now Finesse is trying to flank through, almost getting the kill on the guy on Rock, but getting taken out by Nafly. Nafly with two off kills, and now it's a two on two. Pistol rifle versus two ops. Not easy for Renegades to retake the bomb site, so they want to try to get a kill as soon as possible. Snaff like just missing a shot, a little over Ogre Eevee right there. Now Nifty is kind of contemplating if he should save. Yeah, it's a 1v2 AWP situation, and unless he gets his opening, and he does, it's, it's kind of hard to go in, but now he has to kick. Now it's a 1v1. It is definitely doable, but he decides to go back and bring that AWP into the next round instead, and gift CLG their fourth round here on the board and yeah, nice flash timing to get that pad control as well on that B bomb side to slowly move in and it, it it shows once again like this this double op setup even though sometimes it's very good sometimes it can also be the problem because it is hard to retake a side with that all coming in you have to kind of rely on your teammates going ahead of you and then you can take the long range tools but if the terrorists aren't peeking and let's say you're in a 2v2 it's very hard to come in with an open retake. Yeah, especially I'm surprised that Renegades decided to keep so many people towards A and connect it with a two AWP kind of setup. It's because I'd be more comfortable retaking A with AWPs than retaking B with AWPs. I feel like I'd be those small little choke points make it very difficult to get out in the B and position um, um, yourself as an AWPer. So 
Renegade is kind of cheating over a little too much in A. I think it cost him the round as uh, CLG managed to squeak in B. Renegades seem that well, they have been through a lot of the core this team especially. I, I remember back in the day when 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 JKS was coming to his first European lands and everything. What was he 15 years old back then? It was it's pretty insane and he's now in my opinion developed into this player that I, I don't think he's his, his top level haven't have really changed that much, but his consistency has really gone up. And, yeah. Uh, because back then he could have insane games, but then the next game he would fall off completely. I feel like he's more consistent now. Hasn't really like gone that much crazier, but the consistency has definitely been way better for JKS as he has evolved and into a more complete player. Yeah, a lot of people can think that he's probably the best player on the team, and he's had some insane games, and uh, is the, the question is, can he bring it every single time? And Nadi, though, getting the early pick on not fly, this allows this HLG to kind of slow it down a little bit more, to kind of make Renegade sweat a little bit. Are we going A, are we taking middle? We don't have to rush it just yet. We still have a minute left in the round. Let's just uh, make them overpeak. Make Team Renegades overpeak uh, us when we have the, the man advantage. So, aggressive smoke goes down. Already Preston's from the tires towards that position. You still is just content with holding back for now. Slowly but surely, CLG are setting up towards that B plane. And while this is happening, uh, off screen actually. Nifty has rotated in and gone aggressive and now found out, okay, there's nothing coming towards A at all. And he has actually rotated in, so now A is completely open. Yeah, I think you still should not have peeked in that situation. We had Nifty peak middle, no one hitting towards A, so you kind of want to bait them towards the stack. Renegade said stack towards B, so, you know, giving that entry, that first kill kind of hurts the stack a little bit. There we go, flash execution as they move out. JKS in the back corner, Asa, close range as well. Ricky coming in, but Asa triples up, eventually taken out. Nifty now in a 1v1, bomb is down, and Nifty missing that crucial shot going for the repeak as well. Time is of the essence. That's Cutler just about will get that bomb down, and now we're in the same situation as we were before. AWP 1v1 retake, but Nifty's going aggressive here. Playing around the smoke is Cutler. Nifty's definitely in a tough spot. Close range hopping is, is hard to do. Especially when there's a smoke right in front of him. He's trying to creep it very slowly. Getting Cutler. Oh, what a no scope right in the face. Taking out Cutler. Huge round by Nifty. Huge round by Azir. Really holding that bomb site down with three kills. And that could have been that could have been CLG's round right there if Azir didn't get those three kills. Very nice to have a position or play in such a position where he can turn around, dance back and forth. He gets this double here as well. Oh, that second that's... shot is dirty. Like, that is legit. I would be so mad if that was me just peeking out. Someone just hits that spray perfectly. A nice double in the end. Coming in from uh, from Nifty there. Makes it work. Pistol only on Kusta. No money for Nope this time around. Let's see if they want to pick up the pace. The CLG team, what they want to do. Right now, situated all of them towards this B-bomb side, towards those b B area. JKS is, is soloing A off screen right now. So there's four CT players towards that B bomb side if CLG wants to hit. Yeah, it looks like they might do that. They have all five people stacked for this B take, and this could be dangerous for them. The Renegades do have the four people in the area, so they're set up for this counter. So CLG, if they be able to hit this shot, and if he takes out Nadi already, and Cutler and Stillo. Butler, though, cleaning it up right now, and now three on three. A little mess here. Ozzer taking out Cutler. Three on two. Now it's up to Kusta. One on three with low HP. Renegades with a beautiful side hold here. Very nice. And also the fact that they just, they, they know to stack that B side at that point. Um, they have one player playing aggressively on A, get that early information saying, okay, I, I have no presence toward mid whatsoever, because usually you want at least to have one or two players towards mid, maybe pre-flashing it to kind of show that you're there. But there's nothing coming towards him, so they just stack that B bomb side, and it just works out. It's it's really, really hard as a T team to come in when there's four CTs on the side, and you have to win like duel after duel after duel before you can get the bomb down. Yeah, it's also every time um, CLG is hit B, 
Team Renegades had four people there, so you kind of want to think maybe we should do more defaults towards A, keep two people A as we, you know, so next round we hit B. But since CLG called a timeout, I'll bet you Team Renegades will stack two people A, and I think CLG should hit B again. You know, it's about that mind game. Yeah, hit double B down. Again. They, you know, you hit B um, two times in a row, it didn't work, so we're going to stack towards A. But no, Team Renegades, they're too smart. I think also this this being just a couple of pistols, I think maybe this round is kind of out of the equation. Yeah. So maybe yeah. the the theory could be that the next time they have a buy, they're going to hit B, because I think that's that's a very good point to have that mind game going on. This one, CLG aren't expecting much out of this. Uh, one player with armor, no utility whatsoever. So they pretty much need some like wonder like wonder shots coming out of them. Desert Eagle on finesse could be the the difference maker. CZ 75 on Ethan as well, but. Renegades are ready for this. They have two MP9s as well, just to farm it up. So, um, as you see with Nadi, he has, he's the only person I've seen with armor. Now, he bought armor because he had an excess amount of money. To be honest, I would rather him not buy armor in a pistol and maybe buy an op for a teammate on the next round, next gun round. But now, this uh, next one, they, I think they might have to have a bomb plant if they want this armor, head armor, or armor op ability. That's the spray coming down. Bob has definitely been dropped, and you still have finishes. Things off as we do move into round number 10. Renegades with a one round lead, and here we go. So, are going to put it to the test if they're going to go for the mind games and go for a straight B bomb. Not a straight B push, but full B push once again. And let's see how Renegades are playing at this. NAF is actually still on the MP9, which is interesting. Renegades, though, they're, uh, they're adjusting a little bit. They do have two people kind of towards the. JKS is at the connector for the fast rotate, and look at not fly. He's gonna be boosted up and nifty with it just a barely miss. He spots at least two, three people towards this middle. This prompts Renegade to kind of uh, peek a little bit, but decides to fall back from that drop boost and nifty taking out Kusta. That's the power of the AWP. Take a shot, fall back, re-angle yourself. Make it very difficult for CLG to read. And now the rotation yeah. from NAF is coming in as well, so. We have three players on the bomb side. Nav can play a close angle here towards mid as JKS is holding the other one. And they can just take the time out of this round here. Kind of delay the eventual push from CLG if they want to. Still a couple of Molotovs as well on FNS and Ethan. Could use that to flush out positions, but let's see here. Push coming into mid. Spray from JKS hits one and does damage to the second one. But look at that MP9 next in line. And that's a double frag coming in from NAF. We do see Ethan, last man standing, taken out. It's always disheartening when you have a rifle and get mowed down by a submachine gun. It just makes you just a little more sad. <laughs> just 10% <laughs> uh, extra sadness. Sold in the wound. A little bit, and Renegades have plenty of money to work with while CLG has to save again. They're on a, a, a four round losing streak, so they're able to buy some pistol armor. CLG, though, decides just to get pistol, no armor. They're going to try to get a little more utility, maybe an op for next round as Kusa has 2400. And this could be just a throwaway round as Nifty's going to push, showing no respect right now. It's once again like he sees no presence towards mid. The last round where they actually played around mid, they threw smokes, they threw flashes, he could see everything. This time around, there's nothing, so he just pushed it through. Gets one or two kills and also secures the bomb and actually does get that quad kill in the end, 4k coming in from him. But like the information he gets from that is basically, okay, there's nothing mid, I can just push it, you guys do whatever you want, and we're gonna take this round easily. And so another timeout by CLG. I am thinking they're talking about the aggressiveness that Team Renegades are doing towards A. As you, as you saw that last couple rounds, Nifty's being super aggressive towards middle, always peeking, hey, um, you're not peeking middle, I'm gonna push a little bit. And if you don't have a, an established default where you punish people like that, you're going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and stack other bomb sites. And so CLG, they have to take control of this A halls or A middle and make sure that that Team Renegades has to play passive. Like give up less map control to Team Renegades if you want to have a better chance in this map. I also feel like Kusta needs to step up is pr probably not the right word, but I haven't really seen a lot of impact for him so far. And I think. That could be maybe some of the changes they would need as to open up mid and maybe also open up that B plat. So definitely would be looking at Gusta to get a few kills here. Been invested in an AWP. Get on him. And so as you see right there is that 
Team Renegades did see them middle, all right, off the start. So now they're playing a 2A hall kind of setup. This heal G should have had a game plan. If they spot us mid, they might over-rotate. Let's go straight back to B. But it's easier, you know, if we see it, but you know what I'm saying. There we go. The flashbang coming in and nifty. Cleverly trades back, or rotates back, gets that smoke down from his teammate. The Nave now giving up control here, but that could have gone way worse with the flash timing coming in and three T players making their way in towards the site. JKS watching mid, and I guess we'll have him and Nifty working together on that bomb sign. That is the name of the game here. You still out on drop. Good first flashbang goes in with the second one. Doesn't really affect him at all, but he's just holding the angle. He's not making it work. As Azza coming in from behind. A double stop takes down both of them. And now the question is where does CLG want to go now? Because they're 3v4. They've just been shut down in drop room. Haven't really been able to move up into this A side as, as the ZTS players have just rotated back and they're holding angles now. And with only two smokes and a, and a malt of no flashes, what does CLG do now? What's the game plan? I think they, they're going to have to try to make a play. We're going to have to have a hero play by by someone. And I think FNS is kind of in the drop area. So he's going to have to bait his teammates to a certain extent where he needs to get this entry kill. At the time as well. But no, not fly peaks it around at the perfect time. And now with only three seconds left, it's going to be impossible for CLG to win. As Renegades takes the round, uh, just Renegades look like they're kind of run away from this. And I think... This is why Team Renegades can sometimes hang with the best. Beat teams like SK, as you see right here in this um, replay, this was a very nice drop retake. You let them take it in your, and then you retake it. You watch matches like SK, they love taking drop with one or two people. So, 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 so people like Team Renegades knows how to counter that. They know how to beat that. And so you can't do SK stuff against a, a team like Renegades. Nifty watching with the open middle, heading that double shot. Get both Kusta and Kotler down and now holding close range without trying to make the close range shot happen and he almost hits the quick skill, but it doesn't <laughs> so matter. Close. He has the backup from his teammate, so it's fine. He won't even be taken out. We'll bring that up into the next round. Yeah, and then um, so much money on the CT side as well. Yeah, CLG is they're playing I feel like too fast at this point. I think they need to slow it down a little bit, maybe uh, try to make as I said, poke one way and fall back to the other spot. Because uh, one of CLG's weaknesses in the past is that a lot of their strats are default base, execute base, and so a lot of times they get predictable. Like you see a couple nades early in the round, you're thinking, oh, they're, they're doing this because they're in their routine, and, and you can't do that at this high level. You have to kind of mix it up here. Yeah, definitely, that, that mid-round call of, of, of shaking things up is invaluable at this point when you're playing high-level teams like this. Making the right snap-second decision is what changes the round. And JKS holding that middle right now as, once again, they're trying to tra take drop control and then do that A split after making a bit of noise towards the B bomb site. Half position bomb and two other players towards that long area. And once again, As is just so good at holding this drop line right now. And Finesse will take one frag after Will eventually be shut down. JKS close range here. Will be flashed out. Can he make it happen? Line him up. And Nifty comes in with the help. Oh, Kusta with the one D. What a nice shot, but still he has, he has to at least three more if he wants to stand a chance. And he takes out JKS. Now it's a one on two. It's very possible, but you still cleans it up. Almost, almost a miracle round by Kusta. But just not quite enough. 10 to 4, Team Renegades. Uh, this, this map sometimes is pretty hard on the CT side, so... I feel like they're playing really well as a unit. You see them constantly taking battles together and flashing for each other, especially when retaking that drop room, drop room, as we've seen a couple of times, but also the way that they play mid and A side together, where they have two people peak in the same position at the same time to back each other up. That's and I feel like that's it's, it's very nice to see a team that kind of plays that CT side, where you just play for each other instead of going for individual peaks and trying to get an individual kind of like advantage and then roll back. These guys are just playing with each other at all points. Yeah, Team Renegade is showing a lot of great teamwork as CLG boost. They're kind of lined up here for this Smoke B execute. First time seeing this uh, this half, and JKS with a nice counter flashing. Not fly picking off Ethan off the start. And after all flashes are done, 
Oh, Renegade no. is still taking away this, and what? Oh, wow. You still was just able to sit in that crouch corner at all points. No one actually peeked him. The first guy jumped straight down into, into Speedway. Didn't even check it at all, so I, I kind of feel like that position, you have to check that at every single point. Maybe not even the first player, but there has to be a secondary player coming in and taking that out. But 11 to, to 4 pretty much speaks its own clear language <laughs> in this kind of case. I mean, Team Renegade showing that they came here to play. They came here to play on land, and CLG looks a little stiff out there. Like, uh, they're trying to do defaults, they're trying to do these two drop, but Renegade's reading them perfectly. Yeah. They know, they came in this plan, well, th you know, these guys like to do this. They like to send two people drop area, then hit the A bomb site. But what Team Renegades are doing, they're counter flashing the heck out of that drop area and attacking with two to three people. So even if you have two people in the drop by CLG, they still have to face two to three other CTs. So Team Renegades is playing brilliantly on, the, on their CT side. Let's see if they can carry that onto their T side. What kind of strat they have in store for us here? Definitely a great advantage for the Renegades. As we move into second half, CLG have to strap themselves up and get back into the game. Right now we have Pretty usual CT setup. Four armors, one guy with kit and a smoke. On the terrorist side, we have two flashbangs, two smokes, and a Molotov. So, could mean we, we have a bit of a bigger setup on this T side, as they do have invested a bit more into utility than we usually see, but just a tiny bit. Color here is trying to speak, but peek, but nothing just yet. He might get headshot if he tries to peek again. He spots at least two, two, three people. So, the call is out right now. And it's up to Renegades, what, how are they going to adjust to this? They were spotted early, so they're going to take over these halls kind of fast. Remember, they still have you still on the other side of the map, kind of shooting around, trying to implant, maybe we might come back to me. Keep a guy here, but I don't think CLG is going to bite that. They do have two people in the A bomb site, as Renegades is going to go for a full A execute here. And also, while this is happening off screen, CLG actually pushing towards B plant, so they're getting this information, but is it too late? The execute is already happening. They are running in towards the side. Asa picking up the first one. Kusta at the back of this bomb site. Can't really hit the shots when he's being blocked by a Molotov, and he will take one frag, but that's not enough. 4v2 situation, and those two remaining were the uh, aggressive players coming in from that B plant. They're now coming in from mid instead. Asa in great positioning. Ethan trying to make his way in there. Ricky by his side. See how this one is going to play out. Nice shot coming in from Ethan. Nifty's out of the picture. Asa coming in with a USB of his own. And now Ricky, 1v2. That's kind of an idea of where these terrorist players are hiding. Has a kid as well. And, oh, <laughs> he can't get over the ledge. And that's a problem. Asa finishes him off. And great round by Asa. 3k from him. Nice entries and also holding the position, making sure when to peek and when not to peek. I think they caught Color off guard there on this A take. He was way pushed up by the A halls, and uh, if he was overwhelmed, he had no help with Kusta in the back of the bomb site, and we had one of the other CLG players up by the bell tower or boost area. I guess tower, you can call it tower. And so Cutler, if, if he spots two, three people, he has, you know, either play all the way back or have your teammates come help you. All right, close range pistols are working there. Wonders once again, Kusta and Cutler in unison picking things up. And now Kusta still holding this angle, but 2v3 will be the scenario. He said 75, Finesse and Ricky ending it up and close range pistols once again. Oh no, that's, uh, that's around you. Probably shouldn't lose that convincingly. I mean, if you're the, <laughs> you never want to lose the second round after pistol, but if you do, you know, make it hard for the team. That looked way too easy for CLG, and, that, just... and, th and that's the spark to help them get back in the game, you know? Like, you just completely 180. It, it hands them that second win, and you don't want to do that. You're up 12 to 4. You know, don't do anything that crazy, that risky off the bat. You know, you can take your time. They just went for a, for a straight rush play, and it didn't work out in the end, and now pistols apart from the uh, scout on Nifty. Maybe that could be what changes the round here, but I, I highly doubt at this point. Five UMP 45s coming in for the CT team. who are just going to be content with holding back now. Have a lot of utility to spare as well, so we will be wasting the time at the T side with that as we move on further into the round. As we see here, Renegades decides, hey, I'm going to fall back. They notice the pressure at the B bomb site by CLG. 
but in that turn, it causes people like Ethan to push off this B platform. So now CLG is going to be ready for this A take. As Cutler realizes, he's going to play a little more defensive spot to uh, bait for his teammates. And now Renegade is going to sneak through the middle, leaving with the scout. Maybe Nifty will get a lucky headshot. CLG with five UMPs. This does not look good for Glox. See so as we move into the execution. Oh, can't really call it that <laughs> when you're just still, running in. He still gets the kill. I'm dying. Yeah, he does wow. get one. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was point blank to uh, finesse and managed to headshot him. So impressive by Nifty. At this point, 3.1K on the lowest play on Renegades before buying. So. They're all going to just wait a little bit. They know they're in the lead 12 to 6. They know they can afford to just go P250s for round here. Be 100% sure that they can get the perfect setup for this next coming by round. I mean, look at CLG, though. They, uh, hopefully they recognize that there's four UMPs and Kusa with the kill off. He's still out. And a nice Molotov as he falls back. And now Nifty's kind of all alone. He's going to try to make a hero play here. A Cutler safely defending Kusta like his little baby. He's Good. saving him. Yeah. And he just has his back at that point because Kusta knows he's being pushed. He can hear the, the pistol shots ringing off close to his back and he just has to help to come in and now pushing up towards long. Ethan, one, two, three. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Another round for CLG. And now CLG is rolling in the money by having those two UM, or two rounds of almost pure UMPs from everyone on the team. They Built up a substantial bank roll, oh, and then this we is finally see the double op set up. Interesting buy because we have the double op set up with three UMPs as well. <laughs> this is, uh, you don't see this every day. No, you don't. And it's going to be up to the UMPs to be able to support the oppers and make sure that they can't miss a shot when they try to charge down one of these oppers. And look for CLG, they are playing a pretty passive B setup. Of course, Team Renegades can't see that now because they're doing a little. Uh, a default towards this drop B area, try to take control of drop. You, you see this a lot of, of, of these days that people like to take control of drop first before doing anything else. As you saw CLG last half, Renegade's kind of that perfectly. Now can we see if CLG can do the same thing? They're utilizing a couple of Molotovs to take that macro control and Avanes is giving that up quickly. He knows they can go in and get that area back if they want to. So now Renegades, drop control imminent, and the rotate coming in from the rest of the team. So this looks a bit like a full-on B execute. See, he's in pushing in, just getting some information. Okay, there's no one here. Orp is still in play, you still out. AK-47 in towards drop room, and Ricky here. What can he do in this situation? And Ricky here has hit that shot. Oh, he almost got timed by... Oh, he oh. does get timed by Nifty, and this is terrible for CLG as those kills are going to just snowball. CLG hangs in there. Managed to get two kills. And Costa with a nice kill. That should not have happened with that smoke. Just a little earlier. See, so yeah, Nifty holding the position towards drop room. Secondary player going for the plant right now as we have time ticking down. And now Nifty, how's he going to play this one? This is a dangerous game to play, being this aggressive. Let's see if he can make it pay off, and he won't. FNS takes him out, and now it's Azza all alone, 1v3. Sitting here by Rocky, hasn't been spotted yet. Takes the first one, go for that second one as well. And now it's just Cutler remaining. Azza oh is going to make the play, the hero play, the 1v3. And the Australian just shines again. That was an amazing play by Azza. I was on the edge of my seat. I was, like, I was thinking one or two kills at most, but that third kill. Impressive by Azure. They needed that so bad, and now the momentum kind of shifts back in Renegade's favor. It has to feel so bad because you know, like 3v1, you know, you have it in the back, and then you kind of ignore the, 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 the rock position for too long, allows him to get the first two, and then that third kill is just, yeah. That's a hard one. And now they are taking a tactical pause straight after this round. I feel like probably a good idea if they can keep their minds off the fact that this just happened and then focus on the future. How are we going to do? How are we going to make this better? And I feel like with the addition of, of Rio as a coach, I think that communication focus on getting better and not just hanging the old mistakes is probably something that he can help with. So hopefully CLG can bounce back strong after this. They managed to buy, though. If they lose this round, 
they are going to be reset. So CLG, they want to stay in this game. They want to have it close. They have, this is a must win round for them. And uh, Ricky has it up instead of Kusta, so. Ricky going back to his old tendencies here when he was the main alpha for Renegades for a while, for the longest time, and Kusa kind of playing a little bait setup with FNS and this A Halls here. JKS though, going to try to maneuver around here with uh, the rest of his team. Free fires, one place, and not really doing much more. The smokes are blocking them off for now. That's just, they have this two man setup. If Renegade come charging in. It's so usually the position that Kusta is in, a very, very well known bait spot. So it should always be checked. Cutler's position here. This is actually the interesting one. And they do go in pre firing, and that's the timing for Kusta to go in. Okay, just trade that. And if FNS gets this, he does. This is actually a great trade out for CLG. They hold map control and they win out in frags. It has a very nice triple hall stack. Uh, for CLG. They had to risk it, and Renegades, uh, they kind of fell for it in, in the trap. Uh, CLG, these last rounds, they've been stacking heavy A almost every time. So hopefully Renegades can can see this, that they've been hitting, hitting second A a lot. And B's kind of their weak uh, bomb site. So I think if Renegades wants to finish out the match, they should really uh, put pressure A, but eventually fall back and hit B. See money is tight right now. On the Renegade side, 1,600, 1,500, and a lot of loss bonus either, so this one is going to be interesting. Oh, they just, oh, okay, they're just going to go for full blocks. With one P250 between those. Let's see if they're just going to go for the fast play, get the round over with, and move into the next one. Bomb is still defensive. They are still just playing it with a bit of sense, not just pushing brainlessly into a situation. Yeah, if it, even if you save, and it's always a great I, idea to make a lot of noise, bait the nades, because the more utility that CLG use, they have to rebuy the next round. And, you know, it, you got to think about the game in the whole 16 rounds, you know, or the whole 30 rounds where, yeah, we might lose this round, but we want to whittle away their money for, so when it comes to maybe 13, 10, 13, 11, and we win that round, CLG is kind of a lot lower in money because we make the rebuy utility, make the rebuy guns when we kill them. That's one of the things you can almost do uh, in, in every single these eco rounds you have. You can almost al always make a burnish utility. You might not be able to get frags here and there, but the utility is something you can always take out. So, two players remaining. They've already gone one frag. Cutler has gone down, so not a terrible round yet. They can actually get even more. Kusta watching over middle. Yeah, but JKS, even though he's in a pretty good spot, he has a Glock, and it's never a great spot to be in. Or, or the Glock, because you have to fight that long range that FNS spams JKS through the wall. And now it's up to Nafla. He does take out Kusta, which can be uh, well, pretty good. So two guns, a little bit of utility. Not too shabby. Yeah, not the worst uh, full eco in the world. And now Renegades, they're uh, out with them. Hopefully they're not thinking too much because uh, they were up by a cons considerable amount of rounds. And after two resets, after losing pistol, or after losing second round, and then reset after the first gun round, I mean, it's not looking too great for, for Team Renegades on their T side. The CLG's kind of coming alive. They're, they're finally showing up here. Like, hey, we're here to play too. In this round, Renegades, they realized that they could have false spot, but it's, it's not going to really work out. So they're going to go for some pistols instead, and they're just getting slaughtered right now. Ethan and FNS get frags each, and JKS coming in with a double, but I think that's going to be... Oh, no! JKS triples up! 4HP still makes it happen, grabs that third one, and now it's 2v2. It's still doable here. They have some kind of map control. Naf is still with that Desert Eagle. Could probably grab the uh, M4. Could get that drop from his teammate. Yeah, there we go. Usually that's what you want to do, especially also if there's an extra one for JKS. If they can get the bomb down here, they have a full minute. This could put a lot of pressure on CLG. Yeah, and getting the bomb down, getting those kills, or to get enough for Renegades that they can win this round and be so detrimental for CLG. You see both the CLG 
players are playing against or with each other, trying to sneak through this smoke. And JKS is taken out by Kusa. Now it's up to Nafly. Dangerous game here. He spots one, does the damage. 1v1 now. Will he wide peek? Straight away, he's just holding back. Nate goes in. Oh, he's taken out. Cutler is the saving grace for CLG, and he has plenty of time to grab that orb as well. But very close round. Very good round from Renegades, considering what they had to do, like what they had to, to bring into the round in the beginning. And I think after the rounds that success had that, that team um, um, Renegades has had is at B. Eco, come around. They should think, hey, maybe their their B is weak. Yeah. Let's fake like we're doing in A default. Throw some nades. Maybe keep one person there to kind of lurk. But let's hit towards B. So we see in the map, KLG is known for having two people halls, two people A a lot. So let's go towards B. As you see, running gates, they are gearing up for that B yeah. hit. They Looks smell like weakness. Just a quick push here. Um, Edging onto that smoke. Three TT players on the bomb side. Ricky misses that nade, and now he has only his orb to work with for now. As if he would switch up to a grenade or something that would take out a lot of time where he could spot. Dropping down in towards speed where they're taking defensive positions. Asa coming in with a kill, and now map control is being given to the terrorists. They are pushing in towards that bomb side. Behind these smokes, this wall of smokes, they can get this bomb down. Ethan on the edge of it, but he's, he's scared. He's not pushing on through. There's no backup just yet. 4v5. Retake. This bomb goes down. 4v4. Cutler coming in with one. Tries to spam here, Ethan. See him getting lots of damage done now. All of a sudden, it's changed the round. 2v2. Damage coming in left, right, and sends him that fly. Now all alone. Takes one down. That's Kusta gone. And now Cutler is all alone. 3 HP. Has already 3 kills to his name this round. Can he make it a fourth? Kit on Cutler. Goes for the tab. Knows the specific position of Nafly now. The HP advantage is so big. Let's see if he can hit that headshot. It will be Naf in the end. And it's it's so hard to battle with 3 HP against a full HP player in that yeah. position. Especially when the bomb's planted and you know any one bullet can take you out of the other uh, round. And so nice try by Cutler. And uh, it looked like the round was going for CLG's favor with the initial kills, but then Naf coming in with huge. Just getting two, three kills, or at least two kills just at the end right there. So Renegades, they, uh, they might be on something here as CLG's kind of on a wonky buy where they only have one incendiary, a uh, pistol and, and an ump with an ump. Yeah, this is not the best buy, let's be real. Um, and also when you're coming up against a, a Renegades team that has pretty much every piece of utility they want, everyone's on AKs, they have the open nifty as well. They're going to have to rely on, on these kind of double stacks and, and winning out these duels. Cutler with the bait play. Let's see if they are still going to check after he goes down. He goes for the play, gets a one, and gets a two. And now a third player making his way in. And he smokes himself off. Very nice. Might lose some HP to the fire. FNS just edged out there by now. For now, still a one-man advantage, though, for CLG. There's definitely a doable round for them to hold on to. Kusta is on. 18 HP. Bomb on the back on Naf. So the question is now, they have some utility to spare. Do they rotate back and go towards this B bomb site where Ricky is so aggressively posted up? Or do they just go for the full push? I think with the time left, unless they hit an amazing shot, they have to go towards A bomb site. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they get these two kills. Because going back to B will take too long with how little time left. And Ricky's such a great spot. And uh, it's going to be an easy kill for him if they go that way. Let's see if he's trying to open it up to find someone through this small gap in the smoke. One smoke left on him if they want to get this CT smoke down. He misses the shot, but Naf comes in and it's going to be Ethan to finish it off. Two orbs picked up as well. And good jobs being exchanged by the uh, CLG players there. Coach Rio animated as we do have a pause coming in. That's a timeout for Renegades. Nice play there. I love the fact that they have two players initially. One drops a smoke, then runs through the smoke and peeks it. At the same time, the guy behind the haystacks peeks out as well. So they're guaranteed to at least trade and most likely also get us, uh, an extra frag. Yeah, when you're up in, in numbers like that, you don't have to get two, three kills. You just want to trade kills. That's the point, because eventually, if you keep trading kills, you'll win because you have the, the number advantage. And Team Renegades, 
they seem to be scared of doing the same thing two times in a row. Like, you worked B, it worked. Out of all the rounds you've won, you pretty much hit B and it worked. But you keep going back to A the next round after you win. Thinking that CLG is going to over adjust. CLG has not been adjusting at all on their CT side. They've been playing two towards A the entire time. And so, if I was Renegade, I'd keep hitting B until CLG stops my B take. Here we go. Quick play coming in. Missed shot by Ricky in the beginning, but he's going to hit that second one as well. And I think the hold is pretty pretty clear at this point. There's not going to be too many openings. As we actually, as I say that, Asa and Nafai both open up, so already now they got two kills and are pretty good still. They take two weapons out of the equation, but not get anything more from it. It's going to be 14 to 12. This was the pistol coming in and the money on Renegade. This is actually an interesting one because you still have on 3,300, Asa's on 36. And they're going to go for the buy here. So that means we're going to not have the optimal setup for this T side here. Yeah, not at all. I mean, they're kind of lacking utility, but... I mean, that, that last round, they almost took B with Glocks and zero utility. They have to realize that B's not their strong bomb site right now. And you can see there are two Renegades people in the A-Halls. Maybe make that A presence as Nathfly is making noise at B. Um, you know, trying to bait any utility, bait positioning, maybe over-rotate. CLG, though, they're not rotating. They've still got two people A. As you still owe. Trying to work this drop area, make some noise, smoke it out. And um, But on Team Renegades, they're very low on utility, so... You have to rely on some picks here, I, I think, if, if they want to enter a bomb site more so than an execute. Yeah, they're set up towards the A split at this point, and to be fair, there's only Kusta on that bomb side. Kotler is in that connector area. They're still in his teammate are trying to make their way into, but Kotler is holding it down. He's doing a very good job of it. Asa finally getting that kill in. Now Kusta technically all alone here on this bomb side, and then Molotoving him out. There's not much he can do in this kind of position. He can go for the peak, though, and he goes aggressive. He takes down JKS, finds a position of Candace, but eventually will be taken out. Nifty now. AK-47 in hand. Runs into two CTs and now Nafly is all alone and CLG bringing it back into this game. And I kind of feel like, as you pointed out, they're running out of utility before the actual execute happens and that's a big problem. Yeah, that's a very huge problem because any anytime you see one smoke and one Molotov from Team Renegades where they only have maybe two smokes or a Molotov, CLG has their whole set. They have flash, they have smokes, they have it's, incendiaries. And so every time you throw smoke, they're going to counter with a flash, you're going to counter with a maid. And eventually, you can't win that game if you have less um, utility and they're countering the other teams, um, countering you every single time. See here, you see Team Renegades hit and beat on their ecos. I want them to hit them on the gun round, okay? You guys are, are doing the opposite of what I want, but <laughs> again, I'm not Coach playing. the Bears, of course. I'm just, I'm just commentating here, so Let's maybe, see here. maybe they'll listen, who knows? Maybe as they try to push in with the pistols here. So it's bombsai of FNS with the first one doubles up and Ricky and Ethan both chiming in. As the last man standing, maybe able to get something done with the CZ75, but nope. Will be taken out in 14-14. This is the round. Oh boy. Two ops set up. You want to throw smokes. I think a good smoke execute would work really well. Yeah, and they are taking the time out just to make sure that whatever plan is on the line here, it is 100% understood by everyone. So they can get every single smoke down perfectly, every single more so if they want to flush out eventual all positions. They are sure who throws what and where, and the timing they're going to execute in. Because they have this full buy, they have all the utility they want. Right now they're talking about, okay, how exactly are we going to do this? What are the things we need to look out for? And what do we do if something changes? Exactly, and Renegades though, I. Even though I say a simple B take would work, I think it has to be a little more complicated than that, where you got to put a little pressure towards it. You got to make it think you might, you know, do your same old default, but quickly go into the B as CLG. They're doing the 1A hauls and then one kind of fast rotator, which is Kusta. He loves to off by that connector ramp area. And the Renegade, they, they send the bomb towards Hall and having four people towards middle, so we'll see if they're going to try to get a fast pick here and then see what they do after that. It looks like they're trying to flush out the middle. 
Cutler in the bait corner as Kuster holds the uh, the middle with his orb. So nothing towards long at this point. So they have this kind of map control. Kuster is technically watching two angles at the same time. Let's see where they want to go with this. Three smokes. On Renegades. Look what's, what's unfortunate for CLG is that this A setup, Cutler's going to receive no help, really. I guess he gets a little bit for Kusa, but it puts Kusa in a very bad spot where he has to look halls and middle. Hmm. So if the time is just right for Team Renegades, they're going to be able to run over this ace, ace head up as Kusa going to have to do something big here. They are checking the bait corner. Cutler goes down. Kusa with another one. Oh, with his first one of the round, taking a bit of damage here behind the truck. Tries to go for the no scope. Actually hits it, but eventually taken out. Asa coming in with one as well. Ethan goes down. 3v2 remaining. Ricky coming in. Hot with an orb as well. 2v2. Bomb about to go down here. Nifty on the back of the bomb site. No utility remaining for the terrorists, but look at this position from Nav. They line it up and he gets both of them. Renegades on 15. Great teamwork by Renegades. I was uh, a little iffy by the that peak right there on Nifty. But I guess it was all planned to where Naf's going to bait him yeah. completely. It works out. He gets the lineup and the two kills. Renegades taking that round, taking it to match point. And now uh, Skilge is going to kind of figure out what they have to do this round to uh, take it in overtime. That's an interesting one. How are they going to deal with this? CLG came so close. If they lose it now, that's going to be... It's going to be heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, I don't think CLG is going to... I think their A setup maybe just has to be a little different to where one person not so far out, one so far back, so it kind of help each other out. For as for Team Renegades, I think they might actually do the put pressure towards middle and hit towards B, because you see the bomb going towards B. But there's three people going towards A. Just drop back hall, back holes. Kind of making sure right now, spread over the map. Renegades, they're making sure that no one can, can push them and get like additional information and additional map control. They're, they're making sure the CTs have to hold back. And it's working out so far. So the question is now, Renegades, what's the game plan? Where do you want to go? Well, I'm still drop back B-holes. They have attention towards pretty much every single area of the map on this T side. When are they going to group up and where are they going to go when that happens? I see Color boosted up at this A wall. And now uh, you see a team like SK, they would do something like this, but now they would have a person in, in mid as this is happening. But this time, CLG is going to have it where Acousta is more towards the halls and Cutler in the mid. So um, even though they're close to each other, I don't think they can really help each other out that well. So. The Exchanging kills here might be a little weird for CLG if Renegades decides to take this A bomb site. Boost his position here. Puts down the Molotov, does nothing in straight up in the smoke. Flash is coming in, he has to win this duel. Second duel coming in, he's spraying away, but only trades one for one. Cutler in that backup position, two for two is a trade. As it goes in towards the bomb site, getting a really nice position. Nifty with the orb and the bomb on his back. Now flying with the flank behind, making sure that they won't get tricked. 3v3 retake. This could be the round that seals the game, or it could be the round that takes CLG into overtime. With Ethan, with the only person with the kit, CLG's slowly making their way through the doors and through Toxic Area. After that, going towards middle, gets taken up on Nafly, who's just holding the middle. Ricky exchanging Nifty with the kill on Ethan, and now it's up to Ricky to win this one on two. He knows where the orb is. But the, question, the problem is there's not enough time, and that's it. Asla takes it, and the Renegades will finish it off. 16-14, very close. I have to say, commiserations to CLG. They did a great job grinding back rounds in the CT half. It just was so close, but it wasn't enough. So close, but so far, as I think CLG was uh, a little too um, bad on the T side. They. Um, Kind of lost a lot of rounds that probably he should have won, and they're going to be kicking himself and lose that one on three against Azur. Yeah, that round was so huge for him and his team. 
I mean, if CLG won that round, it would have been maybe CLG's favorite right now. Maybe they would have had the 16 14. Well, there's, there's a lot of small things that come into consideration when you think back over this, especially when it came to such a close goal line as we saw. So, what a game. And CLG, they, they have to be a bit gutted about this one. They have to go into the next one thinking, okay, this is, this is all or nothing now. We have to get a win here. While. Well, the guys from, from Renegades, they're probably pretty happy with this. It came too close to comfort at the end, so they're probably going to talk about the problems. But getting the win here is a great thing for them. Yeah, Team um, Renegades look pretty solid, especially on their CT side. I think their T side needs a little more work, maybe a little more thought behind it. Instead of taking it round by round, let's have like a six or seven round game plan to where, hey, look, it, if we do this, this round, it might open up. The next round kind of ordeal is, uh, it looked like it was a little too rushed at the early start of the T-side. Yeah. With that being said, we're going to end it for now and send it over to Parla on the stage. Hi, guys. I am with Nifty of the winning team, Renegades. That match couldn't have been closer in standard time. Why did it go the way it did? Uh, you know, we, we messed up a few key rounds. Um, a few trades didn't go our way. Uh, we were just being slightly indecisive on some rounds. Uh, partially, that's my fault. Um, but we just ended up bringing it back together, stuck to the plan that we wanted to go in with, and we just closed it out. Specifically, you guys got off to a good start, then CLG bounced back, and then at the end it was very, very back and forth. Um, what did you speak to? Uh, what did you speak about with Cassard in uh, those two tactical pauses right at the end? Yeah. So basically, what he does in those pauses is he just he he, he gives a very loud. Um, and confident reminder of like, look guys, this is, this is what's going to work. I know it's going to work right now. So let's just take that plan and stick with it. Um, and then he's just like, you know, you know, just the, 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 tap, the typical like, you know, you guys are great. Like, let, let's just do this. Let's just close out the game. So um, yeah, that's pretty much what we went over in those tactical pauses. Just like what's going to work, what we know is going to work, and let's just do it and stick with it. So. Since I last spoke to you, you guys um, removed Nexa from the team. You're now using Nafly, uh, one of the players from the US. Um, how is it playing with him? Um, you know, he's, he's a really good player, obviously, everybody knows that, you know, he's really experienced. Um, so far, like, it's taken some time to implement him into the team and really work him, work him into uh, the rest of our squad, um, just because he's, he has so much experience from other teams. Um, so it's, it's, I mean, it's going great, you know, like, it, it, can, it can be better, but we're just preparing and doing our best for the minor and upcoming major qualifiers, so. Yeah, final question then, uh, with regards to that and being here, where are you guys at mentally right now? I'd say we're in a pretty good spot, you know, everyone is just really focused, um, you know, we're really, we're not, really not taking anything too lightly, um, we're, we, just, we just really want to get in there and dig our claws in the ground and just, and just take these W's, you know what I'm saying? No doubt, no doubt, and I see uh, your old manager there, Ryu, you trying to throw you off, but that was a fantastic interview, Nifty, thank you so much, let's head back to the desk. Take them W's, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, James? I, I never won in my career, so no. Same, oh wait, I didn't have one. Anyway, check this out, guys. Intense, right? It was looking a little bit landslidey there in the beginning, uh, but ultimately, tell us a little bit about the story. Yeah, I mean, it started out pretty close. I think it was 4-4 at one point, so you thought we were going to have a pretty grimy game. But at one point, this Renegade just really started to steamroll ahead. I think the fact that Nifty took so much initiative with the AWP, you know, getting those opening picks with the op really kind of helped them get instant man advantages in a lot of situations. He was doing it very well, like changing up where he'd be coming from. And I think that certainly threw curveballs at CLG. I also just want to commend the drop down room management for, for Renegades. I mean, that's a very hard spot. It's one of the hardest CT spots to play in the entire game. And I thought that as a and you still owe, who, who attack it from T side did really well defending it on the CT side. And as a nifty, obviously, just had really big halves statistically, but obviously things kind of changed in the second half, right? Yeah, and uh, as he was saying in the drop control, I, I commend them as well. That, I played that myself for a little while. That is a hard spot to control. Drop and, room, yeah. Yeah, and they just dominated it. It's on such CT a pivotal side. spot, too. Yeah, and on, in the second half, you know, we, it, it, they got up to, I believe, a 13-7 lead, and then CLG, I think, came back by controlling the money well. Yeah. They won key rounds, which is what they need to do when you're down like that. you got to control the economy well. The problem is, um, Renegades won all the big clutches in this match, and specifically on, like, eco rounds, they somehow managed to get it down to 2v2s all the time. And that is not good when you're trying to control economy, because as a CT, your money's going to get broke if you lose 
e even if you went around with one person alive and your money is getting that low constantly, you're going to get your money broke without even losing a round sometimes. You can go down the Fomases sometimes. So yeah, it, was they, a, it was a weird clash where CLG, I think they reset Renegade's economy like three times in the second half, which you would think, okay, you can really build on that. But then, like you said, the clutch rounds come in. As I had a big 1v3, I think Naf had a pretty solid one versus two clutch as well in there. And so when you're winning all the, these tight rounds like that, those are the rounds you have to win. That's going to be the difference maker in a close game like this. I mean, all it does is, you know, if you're able to get in there and mess up the economy of the other team, you might be able to run away with it uh, once, twice, whatever the, the case may be. Uh, but in terms of numbers, uh, we actually have some statistics loaded up from that matchup, and you can see them right there in front of you now. Just kind of breaking it down, though, I mean, we, we can really note on Azur over for the Renegades, just coming in pretty huge for his side. Yeah, I, Renegades played well, I think, throughout the whole team. You know, obviously some stats aren't going to be as high as others. Some, you know, sometimes the action just doesn't come to you. But I feel like every player on Renegades played fairly well in this match. Whereas I think for CLG, um, I, I don't think Rick A was nearly as good as he needed to be for, right. for this team. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I will commend CLG. And one takeaway I have from them on Cobble was I think they did a good job uh, in A-Halls. Um, they, they had a lot of good setups there. They got frags. They didn't get as many as I think they should have. But at least I, I think they were there. Their setups were, were, I think they made sense. They played off each other well. They just got to get more kills there. And I think they could have taken this match away. But um, Renegades was just, I think, firing on all cylinders there. Firing on all cylinders. And you know, uh, it, it's, it's the match we expected. We expected it to be close. We expected it to be head to head. Uh, hands down, probably the, the most competitive one of the day thus far. Uh, and then to treat us to a 16-14. You hate it for CLG, you hate to see it, but at the end of the day, congratulations to the Renegades. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, this is the only their second event together as a five. You know, they want to go into this next major cycle, trying to get everybody fitting together properly. You talked about it right there on stage with Nifty, you know, trying to figure out how to incorporate Naf. I think he played excellent this game. I think he was great on defense when he needed to be. Again, I think they're using him more actively than other teams have in the past. I don't know if that's mentality switch from Naf himself or if that's just like what Renegades needs of him and so he's stepping up to the plate. But it's cool to see a more active Naf fly. A more active Naf fly. That guy can be a monster in game, let me tell you. Well, you know what? That does it uh, but for these two teams. We're going to be getting into big, and NRG is going to be our next matchup, but not before I tell you about the Strafe eSports app. Head over to strafe.com. Actually, just head over to the iOS or the Google Play Store and pick up the app now because that's the only and the best way to follow along with these teams and this tournament here at the DreamHack Astro Open in Denver. We're going to go to a quick break. We come back. We've got energy and big, so don't go anywhere.